hi guys good day good morning good afternoon good evening whatever time it is you are watching this video and wherever it is in the world in which you are watching this video um yeah welcome to my youtube channel this is the whistleblower channel and here we discuss everything immigration and with the aim of helping you to get the right information and not to spend so much money when it comes to you migrating to another country either to study or just to move completely to change environment or to look for work and stuff like that but for now my videos are still basically based on those who are looking to study abroad and today i'll be talking about an interesting country it's not actually canada so it's another country entirely so and the country is iceland you know we'll be talking about how you can move to iceland to study i'm not mainly studying yes we're going to talk about study but the concept of this video is to talk about if iceland is actually a good destination for you to actually go and study so we are going to be talking about the good and the bad so before i start i would say if you have not subscribed to my channel please do that now subscribe like and share my videos because doing this is going to help me a lot to be able to continue to post more videos record videos post and it will help in sharing these videos to many others when they come online on youtube so please do that so like i said before i continue i would love to show you something very quickly about iceland Things you might not know about Iceland. Iceland's population is more than 20 times smaller than London and it's the least densely populated country in Europe. It is the only country in the world with no mosquitoes. It is also the most peaceful country and even its police is mostly unarmed. It has the northernmost capital in the world. The clearest water diving spot in the world is located in Iceland. Okay, so now that you've seen that video, so let's first talk about certain things that I feel could want to deter people from moving to iceland first is the population you know they have a population of roughly over three hundred thousand or so and in, this is actually going to put a lot of pressure on the kind of economy they will have you know they don't have good land it, the land is basically hilly or it's full of mountains or stuff like that so they definitely can't really go into agriculture but I wonder, they have a University of Agriculture, <laughs> I don't know how they do that. Then again, food is very expensive. In fact, in the list, from the latest list of most expensive countries to live in in the world, Iceland is actually number three on that list. And this is because majority of everything that is being used in the country is imported. So that's another thing you need to put in mind if you are actually moving to it. Iceland either to study or to migrate totally that are some of the those are some of the things rather that you have to put in mind the population is small and when you have a small population definitely you know the money coming there is not going to be big it's also going to be small like that then importation of almost everything that's going to take a huge chunk things will be very very expensive as well so um what else is it I wanted to talk about today? Okay, the weather. So basically during the summer, they have 24 hour sunlight. And during the winter when it's cold, they have 24 hour of darkness. So these are some of the things that you would actually want to put into consideration. I'm talking about the population again. You know, the country is pretty boring. It's not a very lively country. So if you are the type that you love going out, jumping from one place to the other, you know, you're an extrovert, so to say, Iceland may not be a very good place for you to move to. But if you're an introvert, you know, you'll probably be able to manage. Then again, language barrier. The lingua franca of the country is the Icelandic language. I don't know what they call it, but I know they have their own language. Probably the Icelandic language, they call it as well. They have their own language. So even for work, you probably have to learn this language. Yes, that is 
the only way you'll be able to communicate with people. So I wonder how it's going to be easy for you to get a job if you cannot communicate with people. But thankfully, those who are going there to study, I think it's part of their curriculum for them to be able to learn the language, you know, all through their years of study. So those things that I just mentioned now are things that, you know, you may want to consider like, wow, should I really move to this country? However, now let's talk about why I feel you can decide to go to Iceland to actually go study. So, first of all, you know, according to the information I have, it says that public universities in Iceland are tuition free. So if you decide to go there to study, you are sure not to pay school fees. However, it says you would have to pay kind of an administration fee, a registration fee that you'll be paying every year. Is it every, probably every year or every semester, but I think it's every year. And it costs about 600 US dollars or probably vary from school to school. But when I was doing my research, I think it's, it's better for anybody who would probably want to move to Iceland to contact the school directly and ask these questions. But I'm saying all of this on a general note. So I didn't contact the schools, but based on information I can see on their website, in which I'll be showing you guys very soon, this website and how to navigate certain things from it. There's only one school that I see that actually follows this rule, and it is the oldest university in Iceland, which is the University of Iceland. So that's the only school I see that all you need to do is you pay a registration fee every year and aside that you have no other obligation to pay, probably pay for anything in the school i don't know if there will be some other fees you have to pay you know your health care stuff like that you may have to pay for those ones but i'm not so sure about it but when it comes to the tuition it's free in the university of iceland other universities i checked you have to pay certain amount of money every semester so only the university of iceland follows this particular rule that says that you have to pay just registration fee so if you decide to move to iceland you can do your research contact the schools because they even put a phone number and email and i know these guys they pretty respond to email probably within three to five working days they will definitely reply you with the needed information that you want to so i'll be showing you now where you can check the universities in Iceland because with my knowledge I think Iceland has about seven universities some of them are actually private but the rest are public but of the public universities the University of Iceland stands tall you know and it is in the capital the capital of Iceland Reykjavik Reykjavik yeah I don't know <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it I don't know how to pronounce it the spelling alone is you know, it's going to twist my tongue so, but I know it's in the capital of Iceland. So then, let me show you this website where you can go ahead and check the universities in Iceland and get all the needed information that you need to know. But before moving on again, I want to say this. Like I mentioned earlier, language is, you know, something that you shouldn't joke with. So for you to be able to get admission to an Icelandic university, you also need to have uh, done an English exam, probably IELTS or TOEFL. I'm not sure about Duolingo, but you need those two. And this is because if you are not from the likes of UK, Canada, Australia, USA, New Zealand, you know, those countries that predominantly speak English, they don't consider you a native English speaker. So. For us now that come from Nigeria or those who come from Ghana or other African countries, any other part of the world, whereby English is not our mother tongue, even if it's a lingua franca, they believe it's not our mother tongue and we need to show that we can speak English and understand English by doing an English exam in a recognized English test like TOEFL, IELTS. I'm not sure about Duolingo. I know it can be cheap, but I'm not so sure about it. So anybody who wants to apply to Iceland universities have to contact the school, ask the school directly. 
what you need then for those who probably want to go for masters like in the university of iceland now you most likely need to have graduated with a first class so that is when you'll be considered and all of these things i'm mentioning i just hope you are noting them down then when you graduate with the first class you will ask your school you know the normal things you need to do when you're applying for masters to any school you do the same thing but notwithstanding like i said contact the school first the phone number the person you're supposed to contact everything is right there on the school website so now let's go check the website we we'll check out the schools basically the school we're actually checking is the university of iceland then we we'll go check on how you can actually apply for their visa so this country is not really straightforward like that with their visa process even though it is fast but it's not really straightforward like that so now let's get to it